Today on the show, I'm happy to have Dr. Jeffrey Smoot. He's the CEO of Interactive Healthcare Designs. They're changing healthcare through innovative tech. So we're just talking about, you're very involved in VR and healthcare and biomedical technology specifically, there's a lot of maintenance and repairs that are needed. So what's going on in the industry and what are you working on? What's going on in the industry? This is a big deficit as far as those technicians. A lot of people going to hospitals. First of all, I want to thank you for having me. I appreciate it. There's a lot of things going on in hospitals, but a lot of people never think about who actually fixes the equipment. Anesthesia machines, ultrasounds, x-rays. People go in and get health care and never think about, wow, I wonder who actually is maintaining these. There's a program that I basically run in Southern California that basically takes people who never touched a screwdriver in their life, and I take them in 16 weeks and mold them into somebody that can work in a hospital, repair medical equipment. And so that's a pretty, that's a niche because a lot of people don't know about it, even though it has to exist. You don't want to go into a hospital with bad equipment or the equipment's not working. That's very important. Doctors can't even work without it. So that's what I do. That's one of the so things. How do you approach the clients? Are you like going to a hospital and saying, hey, I, I do uh, medical equipment repairs? Well, a lot of them, because it's such a deficit, they're aware of it. They have no feeder really to feed them technicians. So what they do is they just get people how to repair TV. Some places just hire you and say, we'll get you on the job training, but they're not getting foundational um, education. So that's where I created interactive healthcare design to look at innovative ways where I could more help those people who don't have the foundation by not having to go to school, but virtual reality. So did you start by basically doing the maintenance yourself? And then you're like, oh, wait, I could just teach a lot of people and create a business around this. Yeah, I started actually in Biomed in 1988, so I've been in a while. And actually as a technician, um, senior technician, then I went over to IT, and I went over what they call PACS, which is digital imaging. No more filming in, in the hospital. They all give you all your images on the little disc. And um, I went into PACS and worked in various roles as business analysts and different things. And then in 2018, the opportunity to actually start a program from the ground up was presented to me here in Southern Cal College named Maricosta College. So. That's what I've basically been doing. But I know the so low you... Okay, go on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're saying the low-hanging fruit. So the low-hanging fruit was basically people who get into the industry but don't go to school because there's such a deficit. With people retiring, it's going to be, other statistics, like 30% more jobs by 2025, okay, in biomed because a lot of people are retiring, getting out of the, just, just, the average age is like 50. And so a lot of people are getting ready to retire and different things in the next few years. And so you're getting people in because there's only a few schools that actually teach it. And they're teaching it on a associate degree level. It's taking two years and you got people retiring at, say, for instance, the rate of 100 a year. They're never catching up with that. Now I can actually develop some sort of training. That's why I got the idea of interactive healthcare design to help increase the education of the actual technician. So. So you're going with more of a speedy certification. We can get you certified in a couple of months through our course. Yes. This course I'm doing is basically six months that I train on. I'm in cohort number 11, and it's a very high placement rate. Um, sometimes the problem is that people living in Southern California don't want to leave here. There's only so many jobs in this geographical area. So if they just expand, but I have people that have to go nationwide. I got people from coast to coast that came out of the program and are doing well in it. So in the industry. So then they go and they approach the need, which these medical centers and hospitals are desperate for these people. And they say, listen, I'm certified in this particular piece of equipment and that they get the job based on that. Yeah, they do get the job based on it. The program has a pretty good reputation because I'm, I'm always active on LinkedIn and pull posts and different things. It's not just hospitals, it's third party groups. It's because it's such a deficit until... And hospitals have to have these, have, they have to have the staff in some way, whether it's they hire a company to come in and do their medical equipment, preventive maintenance and then repairs, or they have in-house technicians that they basically have working for them. So they have to have it. That's, that's a necessity. And so they already know about the program. They already know about the deficit. A lot of biomed departments out there and companies. And so anytime when I post something, I'm always getting, hey, you got need to want to come to Arizona? Let me know. You got any people want to come to Chicago, let me know. They always are, are in need. So since I especially know since the program is pretty good. What is an individual able to charge for this type of work? 
It depends. If they're doing the independent, it depends. If they're like by themselves doing something, they can charge doctor's offices, whatever they want to pay, 50, 60 bucks an hour. You know, the averaging, the average starting like salary in this area when they graduate out of the program is about 25 an hour, you know, and you're talking about in the hospital, it's a career. You're, it's not like they're going to turn around and lay you off next week. So hospitals just don't lay off too often. And starting out about $25 an hour when you haven't been doing anything, haven't had really a career, and now you got a career the way you're, you're not going anywhere, then this is not bad for 16 weeks. It's not bad at all. That's, it's good pay. And if, as you said, they become like an independent contractor. You charge 50, 60 bucks an hour. It's, it's good money. Yeah, more than that. It depends. If, they, if there's somebody that yeah. goes, in, for instance, they get physician groups, uh, a set of physician groups. I have some people, I have a guy that graduated out of the program that, Basically does wheelchairs and gurneys and beds. He makes a lot of money off of that. He's, he runs a business. He does well. He's got contracts all over Southern Cal. So he's doing quite well. So it's all depends. Some do independent. Some, one guy does in vitro fertilization, but with the certification, it really added to it because before he was just somebody working on it. But now since he's a biomed technician, you know, certified as far as coming through the program, then now he can ask a little bit more money and now he carries a little bit more weight, you know. Yeah, it seems like a great opportunity for somebody who's looking for a career path. Yeah, it is great. It's great. It's, it's great. It's no, there's no doubt. I, I call it a untapped field because a lot of people don't know about it. They yeah. stumble into it. The majority of the people that I run into, how did you get in the field? Oh, I was, my mother has a friend that worked in the hospital and she told me about these guys. And that's where they find out. It's not like it's talked about in high school. It's not talked about in career day. This is a career that people really don't know about until they know about it. And most of them stumble into it. I yeah. did years ago. The way I stumbled into it was date myself, but there was this program called Six Million Dollar Man back in the day with Lee Majors and the guy had been in a plane wreck and he was a test pilot and they rebuilt him. Okay. And I started saying, wow, that'd be pretty cool to do. And that's like another phase of biomedical engineering. It wasn't the repair of equipment. It was more like artificial limbs, internal organs, that type of thing. And I actually was like going to school for that, but I didn't want, I found out deals like engineers. Plus MDs, when I think they came out with this thing called a Jarvik 7, which was like the first artificial heart. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. But after I found out all the education, I was like, ah, I don't know what other thing they got. And then I happened to find out about biomedical technology and that's what got me in. So it's electronic technicians in the hospital. That's what it is. We work on medical. Yeah. That's what it boils down to, you know. So if our listeners wanted to reach out, learn more about how to get certified through you, how could they do so? They could either go to my website ihealth-d.com or they can search biomedical technology in Southern Cal and they'll see Maricosta College say that. They basically are the ones that, where I work at and we run the only program in San Diego that's probably in Southern Cal. I think LA has a couple of programs that's probably, in the whole state there's probably maybe five programs in the whole state. Oh, maybe. You know, and that's a maybe. You know, and so if they Google search and they see Maricosta College, that's me. I'm a one-stop shop. I teach everything from electronics, anatomy and physiology to troubleshooting, medical equipment. And I have a pretty good success rate, pretty good success rate with my program because of the community. I got support. So it's great. Yeah. If you guys are listed, uh, interested in a career path in medical tech, definitely go check out Dr. Jeff. And thank you everybody for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.